Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. It is Friday. Today's guests, including J-Pat, standing by, brought to you by Langley Chrysler. Enjoy no-hassle three-day returns and 30-day exchanges on all used vehicles uh, so you can make sure what you get is just right for you. And one of the largest inventories in BC. Don't just love your car, love buying it at langleychrysler.com. Calm. Yes. Man, we are getting all sorts of uh, action on the ladies. Okay, Tyre and Langley uh, inbox. No, it's some of it's positive. There's, there's one or two there. Uh, but right now, let's get to uh, Jeff Patterson from the Rinkwide podcast and Sakaris and Price. How are you, sir? Hey, Jeff, just so you know, the, the first round, just uh, wrapping up just, just now. Yeah. Are you, are you sure? Is that confirmed or is that just conjecture? <laughs> <laughs> it went a little long, didn't it? I, it did. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I praised the NHL for packaging up the award show into a one hour television event. And I thought they did a nice job of it. And it, it was schlocky dinner theater, but they had the constraints of one hour of television time. And last night seemed to run, I think, close to four hours, which, you know, there's intrigue and it was fun right off the top, but it does drone on. And, and I, a couple of things. One is, uh, let's limit the number of people on stage. Like, I get that this is about the scouts, but ultimately it's about the kids that are being drafted. How about the GM goes up, makes the pick, and poses mm. for the photo? We don't need 10 and 15 representatives from every team getting up on stage. And further to that, the number of teams that have multiple picks, how many times did Gary Bettman shake the same people's hands when they got up on stage? It's like, just cut to the chase, get to the announcement, and, and look, I like Burnaby Joe, Don. I know you like Burnaby Joe. Yes, yes. Uh, we all do. And he was the right choice for GM of the year. But why stop the first round to hand out the GM of the year award? Like, do that. They had GM's meetings the day before the draft. Do it there. Make an announcement. But we, it was already long enough. We do not need a general manager's award and speech after the 22nd pick of a first round that felt like it, felt like it was never going to end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I'll rethink that one, uh, Jeff. Uh, your opinion, uh, and I'm sure you've read a whole lot since they made the choice, but your opinion of the Canucks' decision uh, to draft uh, Jonathan LeCaramacchi at number 15, Jeff? Yeah, I, I think it was a player that uh, they had been linked to, that they had a lot of interest in. There were a lot of people that thought he would be gone by 15, so I'm not surprised. I, I kind of was in that camp that felt maybe moving back and trying to address the, the problems on defense would have made sense, but... If there was a player there that they absolutely coveted, then they had to make the selection. And I think that's what happened there. This guy's a goal scorer. And you can never have enough goal scorers. And, yes, they need help on defense. But let's be honest, the team that's missed the playoffs as much as they have, they need help in all areas. So uh, from what I see, you know, good hands, in tight, loves to score goals. And, uh, again, in time, he's 17. You pointed that out, Donnie. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't turn 18 until later this month. So this is a guy that's going to go back, play another season at least in Sweden. But, you know, we're looking at a player that's still a couple of years away. So uh, there's going to be growth. There's going to be development. I don't get too worried when I, I see a player you know, listed at 165 or 170. We've been down that with the original Elias Patterson, and he worked out okay. This kid will fill out. He's still growing, doesn't turn 18 until later this month. And, and the Canucks felt that uh, there was enough upside there in sort of his game-breaking finishing ability that that was a player that they wanted to add. So not surprised that uh, they rushed to the podium to make the pick when he was still available. Uh, Jeff, our poll question, courtesy of Ryan Anderson. Uh, just kidding. Are you starting to get impatient with the new Canucks uh, management group? Uh, Miller's not gone, everyone. And, you know, first it was the deadline, then the NHL draft. Now it looks like it's not going to happen this week. Uh, are you concerned at any phase here? Uh, let's be honest, uh, as we sit here on day two of the draft, it's been pretty underwhelming. I mean, uh, so much talk and attention on what Jim Rutherford has done to fill out his front office, the diversity of the hires, bringing in people. Uh, you know, they got Kuzmenko. That was great. Uh, they got the Brock Besser deal done. That was good. But in terms of altering the composition of this roster that wasn't good enough to make the playoffs, and I recognize it was better under Bruce Boudreaux than it was before the coaching change, but still they fell short of the playoffs. There are weaknesses, and it isn't about sneaking into the playoffs. It's about building a championship contending team. And so ultimately, as we sit here, the roster remains pretty much intact. And so uh, I'm going to go with underwhelming to this point because there is still time here in the offseason. 
But at the same time, let's be honest, the draft, and we saw it yesterday, whether it was Chicago, whether it was Ottawa, you know, there were teams that were ripe for trades and first round picks are currency. I mean, it is a commodities yeah. market. Well, the first round is gone now. You can't get a first rounder in, in this year's draft. And so uh, I'm a little surprised that uh, JT Miller is still part of the Vancouver Canucks. I'm surprised for a GM that's talked about uh, and a president of hockey operations, speed, an increased speed needed for speed and also sandpaper. Now, some of that can be addressed in free agency, but keep in mind too that you know I, I, part of this whole idea was about clearing out cap space, and I thought that was you know one of the things that they wanted to accomplish with a JT Miller trade, certainly, but also whether it was Tyler Myers or Tanner Pearson or somebody else. As it stands right now, they're going into free agency with the Besser deal done. They don't have a lot of money to spend, so no, they don't. Again, trying to enact change for a roster that wasn't good enough last season. Uh, let's just say that it's off to a, a bit of a slow start under this new management group. Uh, Jeff, we're probably going to see a third pair defensemen and bottom six forwards. Not a, not a lot uh, of money to play with, uh, uh, Jeff, at all. Yeah, and, and, you know, again, we're talking about uh, shifting some deck chairs around here on a team that came up short and still has areas of weakness. And, and the concern for me is if you hold on to JT Miller and he's under contract at an affordable price for one more season, can he come back and play for the Canucks? Sure he can. But guys, what if he gets hurt? Like, if he still remains this massive trade chip, like, that's the risk the Vancouver Canucks are taking if he starts the season here. And if you get to the trade deadline, then teams are likely to just pay a rental price, which you could still, I mean, Claude Giroux has the decent price at the deadline. I'm not saying that there won't be some value there, but the number of teams interested at the trade deadline, I think would be considerably far more limited than uh, right here, right now. So I am surprised that Miller got through the first round of the draft Uh, still a member of the Vancouver Canucks, and uh, I want to see upgrades. Uh, You know, look, we have identified for a while now, uh, this team doesn't have right-handed centermen, and we know that right-handed defensemen are a glaring weakness. I thought at some point through the first four rounds of the draft that maybe they would take a swing and try to, uh, you know, bolster those positions of need for the organization. They haven't done that. And the other thing that I find really curious, guys, and I tweeted this out as well, um, and I know that they just took a goaltender from Prince George, yep. but in terms of this organization and the last bunch of drafts dipping into the Canadian Hockey League, I mean, it really, a Connor Locker was a sixth round pick last year. Otherwise, uh, they have not gone for Canadian Hockey Leaguers. Now, if this was an organization that was producing all sorts of prospects, you'd say, hey, keep on keeping on. But the fact that they haven't done an awful lot of that, it does make you wonder a little bit. And I don't care where players come from. If they can help this hockey team win championships, that's all that truly matters. But it does seem like an odd philosophy to almost avoid the Canadian Hockey League and Major Junior Hockey altogether. Well, uh, Ducks get in the first round, uh, Goche and Mitrikov, and you like the way that team is being uh, assembled, which is in the Pacific Division, of course. Right. And I mean, uh, we already saw the Los Angeles Kings have sort of moved past the Vancouver Canucks and made the playoffs and pushed the Edmonton Oilers. And they, for the longest time, were recognized as having one of the best prospect pools in hockey. And, you know, they tapped into their prospect pool to make the Kevin Fiala deal. So the Kings heating things up here in the offseason. The Ducks under new management, and as you mentioned, I mean, Mason McTavish, Jamie Drysdale, we know that Trevor Zegras has all the skill in the world. Now they add a couple more guys in the first round. Uh, Minchikoff looks like uh, a player that, you know, a top 10 pick, so uh, a couple of years away still. Bottom line is, Anaheim's got all this money to play with. Now, they may not be a fully capped team, but they have some flexibility coming up in free agency, and you just wonder if that's a team that maybe a year or two is going to be you know, kind of in the same boat that the Los Angeles Kings were. I'm sure what the Kings are doing uh, is top of mind to the Ducks. They want to uh, be ahead of their crosstown rivals. Anyways, you're right. Everything that happens in the Pacific Division at some level impacts the Vancouver Canucks. And I just think that uh, the Anaheim Ducks are doing a nice job of stockpiling top-end talent there that, you know, in a couple of years, uh, they may see the fruits of their labor. Jeff, thanks for this. Appreciate it. I enjoyed the uh, monitor as it moved around there earlier. It reminded me very much of... uh, you know, a family vacation through, uh, <laughs> through, through Southern Ontario, the, the Niagara yeah. Falls region. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yes. yeah. It had more of a Southern Ontario feel than, than, than an Okanagan feel. I stand corrected. Jeff, thanks for this. Appreciate it. All right, guys.